My people, welcome back to another great episode of You and I Talk Show, your favorite with Louise Uwachu. Today, my people, we're taking you to life outside the box. Stay tuned. All right, my people, we're back this week with Marlene Wilson. Marlene, thank you so much for being here. I'm so delighted you invited me. I reached out on a whim and look, here we are. It's exciting. Yeah. Yes, I've been following your work for uh, a long time though, and I've been seeing you, Vancouver fashion. You're so stylish. Look at your glasses, look at your entire outfit, all the way to the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked with a stylist for four years to get that. Um, when I started out, I was buying the most inexpensive clothes. I had little kids, we had no money, and when I fell into writing, it happened to be in the fashion world. And I walked into my first events wearing Zeller clothing and Payless shoes and, and, and learned slowly over time and built a wardrobe now that has lots of basics with the help of local designers. So mm -hmm. I, I'm very fortunate that people, people help me pick my glasses, people give me advice on what will look good on my hair, and I listen. I'm a really quick learner and I'm very open. <laughs> And I'm so grateful to my friends that helped me. <laughs> uh -huh, they did a great job today. Yeah, thank you. So what are you what, what are you doing with Vancouver fashion? I mean, I'm always seeing your <laughs> posts about Vancouver fashion. It's so fascinating. Well, you know, it's it's really interesting. In 2006, um, my kids. I originally studied counseling and drug abuse, and I was in my master's, and I realized it was it was way way too negative for me. And I walked away, and I just never found something else that that suited me. Um, and in 2006, my kids pretty well were grown and I thought well I bet you I could find something to do on Craigslist <laughs> and I remember seeing this ad for submissions from a New York fashion magazine and I knew absolutely nothing about fashion but I used to get A's in high school English so I figured how hard could it be so <laughs> so I literally sent off three ideas and they accepted two and then I was stuck I had to figure out how to interview and get photo shoots but honestly from the very first interview uh, my insane interest in people came together. I had goosebumps the whole time. Instead of negative, they were telling me the story of their life and I got to take that and, and give that story wings and share it with other people. Um, I had goosebumps then, I have goosebumps now talking about it. I still get goosebumps interviewing. So I found my passion and it just happened that the door that opened for somebody with a new experience yeah. was in, in the fashion world. There was just a lot of opportunity to write. So yeah. I began to cover student designers and attend all the fashion weeks and, and started getting help with my clothing and and learned. I just learned in the public eye, but all through that, my focus is always the person. I want to know their story. I want to know how they got from where they were to where they are today. And so even the, the oh, 150 magazine articles I've done, every one of them has at least a minor paragraph saying something about their journey to become a fashion designer, a hairstylist, a sandcastle builder, whatever their journey is, because that's what I'm interested in. And I think that's what we're all interested in. Look at reality TV, we want to know. So. Yes, what are people wearing and styling and all those things, yeah. right? Yep. Wow. But we want to know their journey. We want to know we're not alone. How did they get there? How did they Especially get there? Especially when we're struggling. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, and I was an odd child growing up. I really didn't fit in where I into the environment I was in. I was ADD, I was Really, difficult. you were not the cool kid? No, you no, no. You look like you were the cool kid right no, now. No, no, no. <laughs> I was difficult, and, and back then, you have to remember, I'm older, they wanted girls to be sweet and quiet and, and loving and play piano and do that, and I was like a bull in a china shop. So it took me years and years and years to, to find my place, and part of that came through interviewing because every person I interviewed lived differently. Every person I interviewed thought differently. They defined success differently. And somewhere along the line in, in, in this last decade, I, I came to realize that I was okay the way I was, mm -hmm. that, that my ADD, my little quirks, my interests are actually my, my skills and my talents when I interview. So no, they don't work in every social situation, but when I'm doing what I love, they're, they're perfect for me. Mm -hmm. And so, so what an eye opener. I, I mean, I was almost, I'm not even gonna tell you how old I am at this point, but, <laughs> but I wish I could have learned this when I was younger. Yeah. And I think that's when my magazine magazine folded, I was quite upset. Mm -hmm. um, 
it was the time that came to an end. And, and when I walked into books, I realized why. Because now I could tell more stories. You know, mm. my book has 10 biographies that I've chosen because the lives are so different. Yeah. And it's really meant, I just love giving people permission to know, number one, you're exactly who you're meant to be. Number two, it's never too late. Number three, those little quirks that everybody says, oh, Marilyn, if only you could just. <laughs> I don't need to just, my quirks are my talents. You, to, you know, the permission to embrace their journey that they choose to, to step outside of what society is dictating and, and really be validated to live the life they want. Yeah. So I, so I feel very really blessed. So what's really funny is that you say that you started when you were really uh, mature. You say you started when you were 49 years old. I answered a question. But right <laughs> now, you look like you're 49 years old. So well, I don't know if bless, you're just getting started. Bless you, I've been in the, I've been in the industry a decade now. Um, and I actually uh, launched my first book five days after I turned 60. I had a birthday party, 150 people came, the community that supported me in this journey and gave me a chance to write. All came and we partied and celebrated and we had performers and, and, and we just had a joyful evening um, because it takes a community to, to raise you up sometimes. You know, this is so amazing because um, usually when, when people get older, usually it seems like their career is going down. But you, you got older and your career <laughs> taking off, you know, that's so beautiful. There's a childhood book called Leo the Late Bloomer. And I, I always refer to that. Some of us come to it later in life and whenever it comes is the right time for us. Um, I spent years with no friends. I spent years with, with self-doubt, even writing my book. I had terrible, terrible moments of self-doubt. And through it all, though, the concept that came, that was handed to me in an inter interview is Ujamaa, which is the, one of the days of Kwanzaa. And it talks about a village coming together to raise everybody up. Yes. And, and so I began to realize that's how I need to make friendships and that's how I need to choose who I work with in business. And it, it just changed everything. I have the best supporters around now. The people I work with in business are people I connect with. We're on the same line because I look for people that we came together without competition and are working to raise each other up. And that's why I love the intro to your show. It gave me goosebumps when I heard it because this is a concept I, I start every day with. This is a concept I walk every day with that, that we are a tribe, we are a village, and we are not alone. We're here raising each other up. Yes, we are. Okay, let's take a short break, my people, and keep building our village. <laughs> you and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. <laughs> All right, my people, we're back. We're still talking to Marilyn Wilson. So, you have a book. Eventually, you take all those stories of all those people that you have collected, and then you select 10 stories, yeah. and you put them in a book. It's called Life Outside the Box. Yes. So, how did the book come about? And how did you select people? Why these particular people, you know? Because you, you have like hundreds of options. Yeah. That, that's a really, um, it's a good question and it's one I always struggle to answer. Um, when the magazine folded in 2012, I was really in a dark space because I'd put all my writing and all my focus into it. And I almost quit writing. Yeah. I finally gave myself six weeks. I sat down and wrote on a blog every day. I mean, it could be a word of the day, something in the paper. No real focus to it to decide if it's what I wanted to do. And when the answer was yes, then the, then it was time to figure out what that meant because magazines weren't allowing me to tell the stories I went. And I happened to hear Julie Salisbury's of Influence Publishing talk and I started crying. I don't even know what she said. I just knew, you know, our instincts lead us to where we're supposed to be. It's like that Craigslist ad. I saw it and I knew and I jumped. So I sat with her and talked with her and she agreed it was a, it was a great idea. So which to pick? Um, there's just a lot of intuition that goes into it. You want stories where people had very easy lives. You want people who are financially successful. You want ones who have faced a lot of discrimination. You want people who have struggled with illness. In the end, you want 10 stories that really reflect a wide range of journeys because the point of this is to say, your journey's unique too. Mm -hmm. I want people to be inspired. I want people it to be clear 
that there's not a right way that if you're doing it right it happens this way mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. your life is truly unique the journey you walk is truly so unique. so what is this box you know people always say okay think outside the yeah. box <laughs> but w what is this box already you know like how yeah. are you even gonna know I, how big yeah. is the box and if you're really yeah. outside you know um it was clearer when i grew up you have to remember um I lived in a tiny town. There was no internet in the middle of America. My, my dad was a minister. Everybody fought, thought the same. Every newspaper said, the, the one newspaper said the same thing. The one, the one TV station had the same news. Everybody agreed. Everybody agreed on what your role was. Everybody agreed on what a girl should be like and what a woman should do and whether the man should have more education than women. Um, yeah, That's it was hard, box. and it was it was it was a role I never fit, and so I was always getting the look. Mm. From I can I can still get the look from across the room that <laughs> eye roll. Um, Why is she different? So for me, I think it's a little easier to to define because it took me so long to figure it out. Um, but for all of us, we're we're told what's socially acceptable. And we are, you know, our parents bring us up, and I did my kids too. You have hopes and dreams for them. The people around you um, may not agree with your choices, who you want to interview, how you want to dress, wh how you spend your money, and it takes uh, a lot of strength to turn that noise off for a little while and get really quiet and listen to what your heart is telling you because your heart will not steer you wrong. Mm -hmm. it's, it's learning to listen to your intuition means turning the outside noise off. And you may be led to live a life that's very traditional. I mean, in the end, I ended up marrying, staying home with my kids because they were bullied and unsafe. Um, I made a lot of choices I didn't think I would, but I always let my inspiration my intuition lead me to those moments mm -hmm. um, and so I think the hard part is every time we do it we get in our head and say well that doesn't make sense yeah I don't have enough money <laughs> oh I'm too old to write oh, I'm too old see, to launch a book at 60 thing, right? but we're told thing. things I mean yeah. society kind of seems to have like an age limit so you're kind of a huge inspiration to anybody out there who may think that they're too old to do yeah. something you yeah. know because really, uh, at almost 50, and then that's when you start a huge career like that. Well, and people don't think you're, you're intelligent. People think that your ideas are old-fashioned and don't have merit. Um, there's definitely an ageism in getting on TV, and that's why I'm so grateful that, that you allowed me this moment. Because I love content. Well, <laughs> but I'm just saying we like to see young, beautiful people on TV. We like to hire young, beautiful people. That's yeah. kind of our culture right now. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of women, and I think women in particular are the ones that are brave enough to say, I'm not happy. Mm. I want to do something different. Yeah. We used to have a Canadian magazine that featured women who did that in their 40s and 50s. Every, every issue they featured somebody, and unfortunately it's a magazine that folded. I, and I was very disappointed yeah. because here was the message to all of us women that it, it's, not, it's not over. Yeah. It's people not, are still alive at 50. People are alive and you have wisdom and you have life experience. Yeah. I'm so much calmer than in my 20s. My, I, I was really, you could light, light, light me off pretty quickly and I would lose it. Now I have that ability to breathe through and know it's going to pass and make, make decisions. But I'm in control of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge of my time and I'm using my talents the way I think best. And, and it's not up to anybody else to decide that. Mm -hmm. So I've had brilliant mentors that sometimes said, I don't think that's the right decision. And I said, tell me why, thank you. And then I think about it and then I get quiet. And sometimes I've had to make the same decision anyways. And fortunately they've respected that because yeah. I have brought through Ajama the right mentors into my life. Hold on to that. All right, my people stay wise, okay? And stay tuned, we'll be back. <laughs> You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back talking to Marilyn Wilson. You know, in the African culture, we have no respect for young people. <laughs> oh. We only respect older and elders. Yes. This is why you always have the elders. Yeah. And the elders are respected. And life experience is respected. And uh, elder wisdom 
is respected. But I find that in the Western society, the older you get, the less valuable you seem to become, you know, which is the I complete agree. opposite of the African culture. So I used to joke with people and say, maybe it's because you have free libraries over here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I do think that's true, and I think if you go, I went to a First Nations uh, benefit back in Hamilton, and for, the elders were on stage, and the elders were performing. It wasn't just young, beautiful, talented First Nations people up there. There was a full range, and the respect given was quite an eye-opener for me because I wasn't brought up in that. Yeah. So um, um, I respect you because I understand that you have so much wisdom. And actually, this is when you are ready to transmit all the wisdom that you have and all the experience that you have accumulated. Because what does a young person have to teach? You know? Yeah. But you have so much to teach. Yeah. And then, so tell us how you got your book to be a bestseller <laughs> <laughs> on Amazon. Um, Bestsellers on Amazon are, are a challenge, mm -hmm. um, and the best way to do is to get to pre, get people to pre-order, mm -hmm. because all those pre-orders hit sales on one day, and so in the thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of books out there, that gives you a much better, better opportunity to, to get up there. I'm I'm really pleased, and my community came together. My community supports supported me, and honestly, I wouldn't be where I was without them. I, I live with gratitude every day for the people in my life, and, and that's why I'm still quite involved with the fashion community, because those are the people that lifted me up and said, you, you can do it. Mm -hmm. In my dark moments, you can do it. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about who is in this book, like some, some of your people, some of you the crazy <laughs> stories that are going to inspire people out there. Well, you and know, then, you know, so that people feel like, oh, I should read that one. It's, it's a full range. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got Ruthie Davis, who's the top, one of the top luxury shoe designers in the US, um, and she taught me a lot about the importance of team mm -hmm. and how nobody succeeds alone. Um, I've got Catherine Susie, who I've been interviewing. She was one of my first interviews in 2006, and my daughter modeled for her before that. And what I love about her life is she's working more in sustainable fashions. She works outside of the industry. She doesn't do a spring and fall collection. She does art releases, and when they're sold, they're sold. Wow. Um, I've got Carolyn McGilvery, who does Beauty Night Society. She founded that, what her journey was to founding that. Um, one of my dear hearts is uh, William Orlowski. He is Canada as tap icon. Um, people don't know him as well today, but he started way, way back at Anne Murray's time uh, performing tap on t TV and founded Canada's first tap company that toured the world with live orchestra and absolutely cutting edge choreography. Um, I've got Lisa Marie Mazuko. She is the wife of Raphael Mazuko, who is a famous photographer, and she traveled the world with him for many years uh, doing hair, makeup, and styling and film production, and then decided to stay home with her son and became a photographer in her own right. Right. Every one of them are different. Uh, Pamela Masek, a local artist who did the series, the Forgotten series, that that was very controversial on the women killed in the downtown east side. And like I said, some of them have had easy journeys, some of them had hard journeys, some of them are financially successful, some of them aren't. aren't. But each of them chose this life. Mm -hmm. Each of them lives it fully mm -hmm. and truly. Yeah. And each of them chose to define success differently. How do you define success right now after hearing all <laughs> these people talk about success? <laughs> you have a knack for just the right questions. <laughs> I was brought up a minister's daughter and success was a dirty word. Mm. And, uh, and I began to ask people because I was curious how they define success in their life. And all of a sudden one day after my book came out, somebody asked me that question and I was absolutely speechless. <laughs> I had actually never considered it because it was a dirty word when I was growing up. Yeah. So I have to admit, for success for me is just being able to sit down every day and write and do what I do without panicking, without fear. Without that, that's a journey for me. I still have a lot of self doubt. Um, I love what I do. So every day that I'm above ground, and every day that that I get to to do my passion, which is sharing other people's stories and give them wings, is a really good day for me. You know what they say right before we go for break? Doubting yourself is a sign of intelligence. Oh, I love you best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna write that and put it on my wall. 
my who other, else is so sure of themselves my, my that other, they never doubt themselves? My other, other favorite is from a mentor of mine, and she said, um, fear is excitement without the breath. And so when I feel fear now, I try to breathe and think of it as energy and excitement, and that's, that's been a big help, too. Aha! Uh -huh. All right, my people, let's take a short break, and we'll keep talking about this. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back. So it's our last segment of the show with Marilyn Wilson. So what would be your advice for young people? And then what do you see in your future? Because this is, this is like your blooming years right now, yeah, you know? Is. I would love to say I'm the oldest writer. I want to <laughs> point out, um, I forgot his name. It You're escapes me right when now. You say that but he started you look so young. No, he started writing <laughs> at 92 after his wife died, and by the time he passed away at 104, he had four published novels. So, when I look at my story, I know it's only one of many. And uh, um, in the future, I, Life Outside the Box is supposed to be a series. Um, hopefully, as it gains momentum, I can put less and less known people in there cover more daily people. You never know where that piece of gold is going to come from. It could be the person next to you on the, on the bus that hands you that little bit of wisdom that you've been looking for for the last two weeks. So that's, that's a big part of it. Beyond that, probably more speaking. And I, I really can't see. I feel like I'm in a year of change, and I haven't quite figured out where it's going to take me. But definitely, I have four new books on the, on the drawing board. I just have to stay home more yes. and get to writing and continue doing interviews. I have some amazing interviews coming up. Up and and amazing interviews waiting to be told. So. Yeah. So who are your favorite people to work with? Do you see a difference between men and women? Do you see a difference between Canadians and Americans or other international people? Like what yeah. is the vibe when you're working with all these people? I, I love first of all a unique story. Mm -hmm. Something I haven't heard before. Somebody who really says no I'm not doing that I'm doing this. Um, but the best interviews come when somebody really relaxes and just opens up and talks to me like a friend. Some people are very good at telling their stories. Other people it's really hard work for them to get it out. They're not used to having the spotlight on themselves. So you have to just be very present mm -hmm. and, and encouraging and sometimes you work harder than others sometimes it's just this beautiful story and language is handed you so the other thing I want to go back to is what advice do I have young people is is work hard yeah work hard there's a <laughs> sense of entitlement now um, yeah. I still am working on this being a financially successful thing uh, four to ten years is the average um, some of my interviews going in the next book talk about this. You need to work hard. You need to quit worrying about recognition and stuff. If it's what you really want, you need to work and put your mind to it. Actually, I'm under the impression that nowadays young people want recognition without anything whatsoever, <laughs> without having done anything, you know? People it's, want to be yeah. recognized. People want to be popular and famous yeah. without necessarily having accomplished anything. I think that's part of our culture now. Mm -hmm. I've got my degree. I've earned your respect. And it, it doesn't come that way. The, the hardest workers are the ones that succeed in the end. The others might, might have a flash. But the people that stand the test of time, I, this, is, this is a very true story. There's a model on the runway at Vancouver Fashion Week that I had to go back to and find. It didn't come easy or natural for her. I've been watching her for several seasons, and all of a sudden this time her face was beautifully relaxed. Her, her walk was, was really coming together and being very natural. And I went back and I said, I can see your work. It's the people that want it bad that get there. Mm -hmm. And she wants it, and it shows. Yeah. So people keep working on your stuff, you know, don't yeah. expect that it's going to happen overnight because I'm under the impression yeah. that we want success to be like a fast yeah. food thing. Eh? And it comes and goes. <laughs> you forget success comes and goes. Yeah. You know, we're in a very volatile um, internet generation and it's who's caught the recent media attention, usually for the wrong reason. So you have to build that foundation of work. I mean, now if I have to write, I've been working on it for 10 years. It's a muscle. And even in my worst moments, I know that muscle still works. Uh, when you go out there and, and start out, you have nothing behind you. There's no foundation. So you need to build that strong foundation. But people in the end knows 
who works. Mm. People in the end knows who's producing the right stuff and has the company's best best interests. It, it, they always raise to the top. It may take a year or two, but you have to trust that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and it will get you where you're supposed to be. I love your message. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love your message, it's so inspiring. I can't wait to see the series because it's an ongoing series. You have so many more people yeah. to interview. So we have a few seconds left. Any last words that you would like to throw out there? Where can people go to find this book? Okay. And, and, okay. and then we're done. <laughs> uh, my website is MarilynRWilson.com. There's links to my blog there, uh, Instagram, all my accounts. Um, right now I'm on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I've kind of pulled out of the bookstores, but certainly you can go to your independent bookstore and order it through, through my Canadian distributor if you want it delivered into the store. Um, yeah, I'm excited. And then reach leave your life outside the box. And, and reach out to me. If you're really struggling, if you have that internal message like I did that says, oh, Marilyn, if you could only just change, you'll be loved, accepted. That's not true. Yeah. You'll be unhappy. So if you're really struggling, you can reach out to me through your website, and I'll give you the smack upside the head you need to say you are exactly who you're meant to be. All right, Marilyn, thank you so much. All right, my people, you are exactly who you're meant to be. You are perfect, all right?